So in this video, I'm going to talk about the best way to learn jazz standards. This is a system that I developed. It's the most scientific objective way I could figure out for learning these standards that I've been using with my students. So my promise to you is that by the end of this video, you will actually have a clear understanding of which jazz standards you should learn and which order of those jazz standards so that as you go, you will maximize your learning efficiency and minimize your learning frustration. Before we can talk about the exact system, first I wanna point out what are some of the problems with the other approaches people have taken. So the first big issue with not programming your jazz standards properly is that it leaves the student not knowing what tune they should learn next and what they're learning when they're learning that tune. So why are they learning that tune? What specific skills or knowledge do they acquire by learning that tune? It ends up just being learn these tunes because I say so. And when you realize how many jazz standards there are, it quickly becomes overwhelming and seems like you're never going to learn enough jazz songs to be a jazz musician, which isn't the case. So to avoid that, there is a path that we can go through. The second big problem is that by not organizing the jazz songs, students will end up practicing things that they can't apply on the tune that they're learning or that they shouldn't apply because they're not ready at that level. So in going through these songs, we wanna make sure that we're learning new concepts and then able to apply those concepts immediately to what we're learning. All of this is the goal of progressing with the knowledge we've already learned, reinforcing that and using that, not jumping around to random songs. So one of the main premises of this repertoire system that I created is that beginner and intermediate students really face a major challenge with having fluency in multiple keys, multiple major keys. And because of this, what ends up happening is when they jump to different songs, they get hit with a bunch of new unique chords. So they go from one song, say Autumn Leaves, to all the things you are, and all of a sudden every, new, every chord that they're encountering is new from a different key or just new within its own key. And this creates problems for beginner and intermediate students that don't know all their triads, all their arpeggios, vocabulary over that. And now some solution that teachers have is, well, the students should just learn all of those things in all 12 keys, major triads, arpeggios, all these things. But it's not really the way we learn something like music, like a language. We're applying specific vocabulary over specific harmony. So once I really grasped this problem as a major reason, if not the reason that beginner jazz students have difficulty learning jazz standards, I really started to ask myself, is there a way where we can organize, let's say the top 100 jazz standards in a way that a student is never learning more than three chords? I tried to make it as minimal amount as possible. What I found out from studying this is that we can do it where a student only learns a maximum of three new chords per song that they're learning if you organize the tunes in a specific way. And I'll show you guys when we head over to the computer um, the process that I went through to manually do this, which was a, a painstaking one. But once I have that data set out, now we can really learn some things that I don't think have been really discussed, in, at least in this jazz repertoire realm. So in this system, the next song that a student learns will also build off that previous knowledge. So when we're adding one or, new, one or two new chords, it will also have chords from previous songs we've learned, and we can still keep up that skill and that knowledge. And in this way, learning jazz should feel more like walking up a staircase where we're increasing in level very gradually without big jumps, instead of feeling like it does for most students, swimming through an ocean to unconnected islands of knowledge that you have to memorize and then go through a whole nother journey to learn another set of things. How does the system work? So like I said, we're starting off with what are considered the top 100 jazz standards. These are widely recognized as jazz standards. I'm using multiple sources, including as a main one, Ted Gio's uh, Jazz Standards book, which has its own list of great sources. I don't think any of the songs on here people would contest as a jazz standard. There might be ones that people think should be added to this list, but again, I tried to keep it in my first analysis as 100. Um, we're also gonna be looking at a separate list. I have two separate lists. I have 100 
jazz standards list and a reduced one that's 50 jazz standards uh, that doesn't follow all of the rules exactly just to condense. If you wanted to condense all this into a year program, how would we do that with 50? So once we gather those songs, what are those 100 songs? The next step is scoring each song based on the number of unique chords the song has. Now again, this there can be some uh, discrepancy with how people would score some of these chords because some people might consider a chord G minor 7 or instead of C sus and then depending on the song that might increase or decrease the score of the song give or take a couple points but the general scoring will stay consistent and the order will stay consistent so just as an example of how some of these standards would be scored a song like so what would get a score of two a song like watermelon man would get a score of three with three unique chords a song like autumn leaves gets a 10 for having 10 unique chords and something more complicated like cherokee gets a score of 19 because it goes through some different keys. Now, I'm not saying that scoring it in this way is the be all end all for organizing these jazz standards. There's definitely other factors to consider and I would like to get your feedback once you've heard this system. What do you guys think about it? Does this seem helpful or not? What other things would you add or like me to consider? Please drop a comment with your thoughts. I'm gonna read through them and really would love this to be a discussion underneath this video with different ways of learning these tunes. So while this scoring system is not the only factor, it does give us a broad and somewhat objective basis for organizing these. And then once the tunes are organized based on this first factor, other factors such as the tempo of the song, the chords that it might go through, the harmonic concepts needed to be able to play that song that are more complicated, all of these other factors will become very obvious and we can quickly move those songs outside of a beginner realm. As an example of this, the Toon Giant steps in my just first scoring would get a nine because of the amount of chords it has. Now it's a short form and it goes through a bunch of keys very quickly with minimal chords. So initially, if I just stuck to that one factor, it would seem like Giant Steps is a tune to learn early. But as most people know, it's a fast tune it has its own unique harmonic concept that for many students is more difficult to learn and it goes through multiple keys. So all of those three things means that it gets a later level and none of those chords are necessary for us to create this smooth path from beginner songs, the easy songs we can learn for jazz to more complicated ones. Another thing I want you guys to think about and consider is go to some of these other lists of tunes that people suggest learning for a jazz student what are their goals in having you learn those? A lot of times the goals might not be what your actual goal is. So in this system, the goal is making the learning as seamless, as easy and frustration free as possible and have a smooth system that builds on your knowledge. Many other lists of tunes you should learn focus on songs that are good at jams or songs that the person giving the list prefer, their favorite 10 tunes. So just make sure when you're looking at those lists and learning from them, you understand what your goals are and what the goals of the person giving that list are in their list of songs. Okay, so now we're gonna jump over to the computer and I'll show you guys this actual list and how the order functions. And I'll even give you a little glimpse at the data I went through to get to this list. Okay guys, so now we're going to go over to my computer and I'm gonna show you in my Notion um, page what I have listed. We're going to go through the 50 jazz blueprint standards. Um, we'll look at the first couple of levels and I'll show you some of my data set. Okay, so looking here at our 50 jazz blueprint, 50 jazz standards blueprint, um, I'll get into a little bit of what all of this means. You'll see my order here of the tunes. Um, starting off with Watermelon Man, the three chords we have there are three chords that are all of the same chord type, dominant. So that simplifies things already. And what I want you guys to understand from this is one of the main things I learned is we wanna start off with blues. So especially for those players out there who are coming to jazz from a blues rock background, the best entry point for you is learning jazz blues songs. And so when we do that, we only have to learn 
a few new chords, the first three being F7, B flat seven, and C7. Now for Watermelon Man, it's an extended blues form. We go from that five and four chord a couple times. I like this because I think it gives you a lot of practice on five chord going to four chord in a jazz context. From there, we go to Freddie the Freeloader, and this one adds in E flat seven and A flat seven. And this one changes the context of the blues. We're changing the key from an F blues to a B flat blues with a little bit of variety with the A flat seven, but building off the knowledge of what we've already learned. We already know our B flat seven and F seven. We know the arpeggios, presumably, and some vocabulary to play over those chords. Okay, moving on. The third song is Cantaloupe Island. In this 50 Jazz Standards Blueprint, um, we have slightly reduced resolution because I'm not having all 100 songs. So we need to learn these three chords as new chords to what we know, um, but it's generally not too difficult in this context. A lot of the soloing over Cantaloupe Island is based around F minor pentatonic, F blues type of sound. So even though the chords such as D flat seven might be new chords, the soloing throughout is very much one general sound that's minor pentatonic based. Okay, moving on from there, our fourth one introduces us to a minor blues progression. So because we knew Cantaloupe Island and we know F minor seven, um, we can use that. And because we know from Freddie Freeloader A flat seven, we can use that A flat seven as well. And we only need two new chords for Mr. PC. That would be our C minor seven and the G seven. Now, sometimes people play Mr. PC a little fast. So you might want to adjust the tempo if you're actually very new to this. And then our fifth song to learn would be all blues. At this point, we only have one new chord to add, which is D seven, because previous to that, we've learned C seven in Watermelon Man. We learned E flat seven in Freddie Freeloader. We learned G seven in Mr. PC. We'll learn some new things about how to play those in all blues, as well as playing in a different time signature, three, four. So in five songs, we're getting different forms, minor blues, blues in three, um, some use of blues language that's not on a blues tune, but we're keeping the number of chords very limited so that we can build on that knowledge. Here's where it gets interesting. We switch over from learning mainly blues songs to going into some modal tunes. So this first level, what I want you guys to think of as like that initial level if you're a beginner, you should focus on learning blues songs, these ones in particular, in my opinion, and then modal tunes. Modal tunes, because in general they have few chords and those chords last for many measures. So as a beginner or intermediate player, it gives you time to create, craft your ideas, craft your melodies, and it's, it's a good way of getting used to playing over that without feeling like the chord's changing so quickly that you are always falling behind. So when we look at those ones, you might not be surprised to see we start with So What? We learn two chords, D minor seven, E flat minor seven. We go to Maiden Voyage. Now, this one, we add only two new chords, B flat minor seven and C sharp minor seven. And the other chords needed for Maiden Voyage are from our previous song. Sometimes you think about these as sus chords. Some people think about these as the minor seven chords. If you think about them as minor seven, we're only adding those two new ones. And then the last one from this 50 list in my level one is Little Sunflower to give us a couple of major chords, D major seven and E flat major seven. But notice we didn't get major chords, major seven chords until this Little, little Sunflower. Um, and we haven't really done any two fives until this next level, level two, what we're getting to. Um, so a lot of the focus in this early stage should be on blues, modal, a lot of minor chords, a lot of dominant chords, and learning vocabulary over those types of chords, focusing on those chords, the arpeggios, the triads, and language over those chords, not even major seven chords yet, major chords. Level two, ends up being more important with major chords and two five ones. We'll look at a little bit of level two here. So we start off with take the A train. 
we add in C major 7, F major 7, and G minor 7. Again, we still haven't added ever more than three chords, and we won't ever need to beyond this. Take the A train has some 2 5 1, so we start to get introduced to 2 5s. Then we do Perdido, we add in just B flat major 7, one chord. We go to tune up, we add in E minor 7, A7, and tune up, if you don't know, is based on a lot of 2 5s. We've practiced most of all the other chords um, up to that point, going into tune up. Then we get the pent up house. When we hit blue bossa, then we add in another new concept here, which is minor two fives. Hopefully that gives you just a little bit of insight into some of the order. Like I said, this order continues. I have levels one, two, three, four, and five. In the 50 jazz standards, it ends up being about eight to 10 songs per level. And then in the 100 jazz standards, it ends up being about 20 songs per level. Um, I like this method, it, it kind of ends up being similar to belt levels in uh, martial arts, and also gives you a really clear perspective on what songs you know and which ones you don't, as well as, like even for myself, some earlier songs that I just never learned because my teachers didn't have this way of going through it. Um, and so some of these songs that are considered standards, I just ended up never learning. So now even for myself, I'm going back to learn these. One of my main goals with my jazz guitar community that will be um, starting up very soon, I know I keep saying that, but I think in the next couple of weeks or latest in November, um, I'll be ready to do it. I just wanna make sure all the material is ready for you guys. This is essentially what we'll be going through, um, working on some different exercises, listening to the great players that have played through these tunes, but using this system as a very clear way of going through and so that everyone who's within that community and as a student knows where they are in their progression and doesn't feel like they're just jumping in and, and kind of lost. They can go and start at the beginning and work through it from step one to step 100. So let me know in the comments again, if especially if you're um, considering the jazz guitar community, what you guys think about this method for going through the jazz standards. Um, at some points, we don't necessarily have to stick to this exactly, but I do like the format of this and how it makes it very clear what we're learning at each stage of the game and what we can focus on to really get better at that skill, then we move on to the next skill. One thing real quick that I forgot to show you guys, um, I just wanna give you a sneak peek at the data set that I ended up creating for this. Um, if any of you guys are computer programmers, you're gonna be cringing at the amount of effort this took. Um, I tried to figure out exactly how to do it, but I don't program, so let's take a look at the data set. So, Basically what I did manually is I went through all of these 100 songs and marked down when the chord occurs, as well as then counting up how many of those chords are there. So I won't show you the whole data set, keep that to this. Um, maybe at some point I'll actually put this out, publish this as far as what I've looked at. Certain tweaks, there's a lot of interesting things um, to find out from this that I've been kind of diving into and trying to analyze such as you know which chords are most common, um, even within genre, which types of keys or chords are more prevalent, you know whether it's bosses or standards. Um, there's a lot of analysis I'd like to do with it, but just so you can see, I basically went through each song and manually inputted in each of these columns and rows. So this is what the system is based on, and then based on these scores, that's how I ended up organizing them manually. Once again, I wanna shout out all the new members to the YouTube channel. Thank you guys, I have a bunch of new members. So shout out to Tony Coleman, thank you. Shout out to Ross Penny. Shout out to Pixel Motion, thank you. Um, Princess Anastasia, thank you for your support. Thank you, George Cole. And thank you, Yuji Tomita. I appreciate it, guys. You guys will get all of that extra content. And this Monday, we will have our first monthly live Q&A, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. I'll put the link in our members section for all of the members. Um, in addition, there will be more VIP videos and I'm gonna be dropping some other videos, special videos from my gigs for all members to see supporters and VIP, um, just so you guys can check those out. Thank you guys.